Clinging to the rock when things don't go to plan. We've just had some verses read to us from John 20 and you may have noticed and thought it was an odd choice when Jesus is saying in verse 17, don't cling to me, but come with me and let's look at this for a few moments. Now, does anyone have problems with this stuff? Or is it just me? Am I the only one that this happens to? It folds back on itself and it crinkles up and I can never find the end. It clings, it just does what it says on the packet, doesn't it? Clinging in English um, means to hold tightly to, but in Hebrew it means something a bit different. It has behind it the relationship behind the action. So let's go back to the word and Mary Magdalene, she's been through a traumatic experience these last few days. She's watched stunned and amazed as the one who had brought healing to her life and experience has been put through a scan trial, brutally executed by crucifixion and died. Her emotions are shot. Her mind can't settle and she has no answers to the questions in her head. Her heart is broken and she is grieving when she comes to the tomb early that morning as no way could she sleep. All the past few days have replayed over and over in her head so many times and things have not turned out as she expected. You probably know the story well, but she encounters Jesus who speaks her name as only he can, causing recognition to evoke her response. Teacher, a cry of, oh, it's you. As she turns and really looks to see if this is Jesus and she tries to cling to him. And this is where we get Jesus saying, do not cling to me. I've not yet ascended to my father. But what does it mean? Mary, in her relief and in her joy, can hardly believe it. And she does that automatic thing that all of us would do and we try to hold on to. Hardly daring to trust he is alive and resurrected and right there in front of her, speaking her name. Yet seeming to keep her at arm's length too. Really, he's saying to her, don't hold on to me in the way you've known me previously, the way you have me in your thinking, it's gonna be different now. Sort of, don't restrict me to what you know of me this far. Jesus is trying to prepare Mary for walking with him in a new way as Lord and Savior. When Jesus returned to the Father, and claimed the crown won by his victory over sin and death and hell and the grave at Calvary. Then he promised to send us the comforter to be with us forever. He's trying to say to Mary at the very outset of resurrection morning, don't cling to me as I was then, but how I'm gonna be now. Fast forward a moment to our day and our experiences Three things, the rock, the plan, the cling, the rock. Around our coastline here in Cornwall are magnificent rock formations and cliff faces which look stable but sadly are being eroded with time and changing environmental patterns. Coastline that seemed as if it would be there forever is now completely different. And it's the same for us, isn't it, in our natural lives. The whole landscape has shifted and what seemed to bring us stability is no longer there. We find ourselves in a bewildering worldwide pandemic, job losses, financial security no longer there. And we can't cling to church as we knew it, meet family as we did. We have to self-isolate. And there's so much more going on in the world, isn't there? We're desperately looking for stable things to cling to. 1 Samuel 2.2 2 says, 
There is no rock like our God. He remains solid, steadfast, immovable, when all else shifts. There was a king in the Old Testament called Hezekiah. We read of him in 2 Kings. 18.6 tells us, He clung to the Lord at a time in the nation when things were all going wrong. He held fast and remembered God in the midst of a time of idolatry. He called for repentance and got the nation to read God's word. And in our day, when all around we see and hear things that try to belittle our beliefs, things that take a place in our lives which can become idols to us, could it be that we've been clinging to the wrong things? The image of what church is, perhaps? How Jesus is portrayed by the world instead of the reality of him as revealed to us in the Bible? Our rock, which always contains the answers for everything we will face in this life and the next. Matthew 24, 35 says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. This is the rock we need to be clinging to in these days as he unfolds the mystery of the ages and he's outworking his plans. That brings us to the plan. This is the key. Whose plan is it? The Bible clearly tells us in Jeremiah 29 11, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you, not harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Alongside this though, there are other verses in the Bible, like Proverbs 19 21, that warn us that sometimes we can have plans in our own hearts that can lead us to error, and that often his plans aren't what we would normally choose, like in Isaiah 55, eight to 10. Doesn't this all seem so relevant to us these days we find ourselves in? Man investing millions to find a vaccine protection for this dread disease, financial support packages being put in place to help ease the burden of the pandemic's dire effect and many with sleepless nights wondering what they can do. How could it all have gone so badly wrong? And I bet Joseph thought the same, you know. There, if we look at his life in Genesis, his plans and his dreams were vastly different to how things turned out, involving the pit, the prison isolation, Potiphar's house and false accusations, but he ended up in the palace, being in just the place God needed him to be to save the nation. And we read time and again through that story, God was with him in each place. And God says, I've got plans for you. And they involve me being with you in the power of my Holy Spirit every step of the way of your life. I promise never to leave you or forsake you. Hebrews 13, 5. Whatever you go through, I'm going to be right there with you. The thing is, do we know him this way? Are we clinging to these promises to prosper and not harm? These are long-lasting plans, not just for this life, but for the next. They're eternal. What we may be planning could just be a temporary fix. But he says, my plans are to ensure that you will be with me forever. And so that takes us back to the cling. For Mary, this meant a whole new way of learning about Jesus. He was still Jesus, but in the power of his resurrection and his resurrected life, he was going to be able to be known in a new and a different way. He was going to release his power to his children so they could make a difference in the world of that day that would impact generations to come as they clung to him and his word and his ways. They 
like us, messed up at times, when they failed to see he was working to a different plan than they expected. But always when they did, as Mary and turned herself at the sound of her name. And you know, that's just how personal it is. Jesus in your situation and mine in these days has a personal plan for each one. And it may mean that we need to turn. In the Bible that means to repent and come back to the real rock of Jesus as found in his word. To get back to what the Bible says. Follow the plan that's there for your life. At times it might seem nonsensical. It might be unusual. It might go through difficult terrain. But wasn't the cross? Who'd have thought that could have been part of the plan for the rock Jesus himself so that we could know the cling. Like Mary, move from knowing him as you always did into the new dimension. He's calling you to walk for these times. Him as the rock of your life like never before. Him holding the plan that is just for you to fulfill. And all you need to do is the cling, not in the tangled up way we began with but as he reveals himself to you through his lovely word. Psalm 63 verse eight says, my soul clings to you, your right hand upholds me and he will always, so cling on.